Look how small these things are. They're tiny. That's why people's batteries die and they don't realize These it. things draw little to no watts, which is key when boondocking. All right, push them. Oh, look at that. This switch is a Wi-Fi booster on the top of my pop-up camper that I've never turned on, I never will turn on. So we're gonna take that empty switch and turn it into underbelly lights on my pop-up camper. Let's go. Well, that ain't good. The ball bearing just fell out. Just got done removing the sofa bed from this area of the camper. And lo and behold, my corner over here is kind of flopping. Well, that's because these wonderful campers are made with staples. So I'm gonna reinforce the corner before I start the underbelly lighting. Ugh, so much better. You know you're getting old when you need a chair to do any kind of projects. Just grab the little piece of eighth inch uh, Baltic birch plywood. And all I'm gonna do is just kind of measure this, cut that off, put some glue around it. I'll use a brad nailer or a penny nailer. I already removed, there used to be a cover right here that covered up the propane, which is a wasted space. And there used to be a board that went across here to cover up the wires. Again, kind of just wasting space. So we're gonna give this a nice good vacuum and we're gonna start our project. Just got done cutting the wire to the Wi-Fi booster. And we're gonna use that power coming from the distribution box already. Um, we don't have to run a wire because we're just tapping into what power is already there. Now I'm just gonna go into the camper and I'm going to pull out the wire that was going to the Wi-Fi booster track that all the way back to the distribution panel and I'll go ahead and cut it off. There's no need to have it. Excess wire, and I might be able to use that for extra the ground. So we'll see. I did order a bus bar that I'm gonna install back here and all the grounds are gonna come over here for the undermount lights. Instead of the grounds coming back here, it's just a kind of a redundancy. There's no point of running wires all the way over there. I'll just create a new ground on the trailer. And I knew that went right through because I looked underneath the camper and uh, knew right where to drill. Don't drill into the wires. Just grab the half inch bit. Probably too big of a hole, but it is what it is. Too late now. So I'm making up the ground wire that will go to the chassis. And this is gonna be using um, 16 gauge wire uh, for my ground. Gonna pre drill into the frame for the ground. God. Forget how strong this stuff is. Solid connection. Yep, that was my head. Ugh. All right, now that we got the ground wire installed on the chassis, it's time to install our lights. And I chose to go with KC. Uh, magnetic lights and the magnetic uh, option is kind of one of the main reasons why I chose to go with this light. The other reason is I wanted an amber light and I also didn't want a bunch of like split offs with a little you know computer module with a remote. I just wanted to kind of buy if I wanted one light, two lights, six lights. Like I said the main reason I went with this is because it's magnetic. I don't have to drill into the chassis. You just saw me drill in the chassis for the ground wire. It's kind of a pain in the butt and uh, these work out really well, I've already tested them. I'm gonna put one light in the back and then I'm going to put one light in the front. And again, these are kind of like a flood undermount light. It also can serve power. This light bar is uh, really nice. A lot of people like it, but when you're boondocking, it draws quite a bit of power. These undermount lights are going to be the jam after dinner to conserve on battery, but also having ambient light and just kind of light around camp. Yeah, see how strong those things are? They're not going anywhere if you're concerned. And the second one's gonna go in between my drawer and my shower sink. So I just got done cutting off the excess wire. This is what I'm left with and I threw the rest in the garbage, unfortunately. I'm gonna go ahead and wire these up with excess amount of wire and then I will rewire them here in a minute. So the negative wires will get terminals and they will go to the bus bar. The positive um, are going to use these little, they're called WAGO, W-A-G-O connectors. You basically pull these up and then you snap them down. They're extremely easy, they're reliable. I'll have the links down to all the material that I'm using 
in this video down below in the description, but highly recommend these as well. What's your favorite thing about camping? Fishing. What kind of fish do you catch? Rainbow. Rainbow? All right, you wanna help daddy turn on the lights? I think I got it, come here. Push this one right here when I tell you to, not yet. You gotta turn the lights off. All right, that's much better. All right, push them. Oh, look at that. You wanna see? Not bad, so just like I said, temporarily put these things in here. Uh, once I get them tidy up, we're gonna add more lights. Don't go anywhere in this video. I've got some more underbelly amber lights to add and uh, I've got a special place for them because at night when I'm trying to do some chores around the uh, camper, uh, I don't always want to wear my headlamp, so stay tuned. Now we're gonna add some special lights on this side of the camper. Let me pull that wire through. These are two amber LED lights that are gonna go where my um, gray water tank sits. And then also it's just gonna give some ambient light over here when I'm getting into my underbelly storage on the other side of the camper. When I say micro, I mean micro. Look how small these things are, they're tiny. And uh, these things draw little to no watts, which is key when boondocking, conserve power. Perfect, look at that. How's that look? Ooh. Booyah! Just like that. Let's go turn the lights off. Oh, it works. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Just to do a comparison on the awning light versus underbelly light, nothing is running in my camper right now. It's drawing four watts. That's because the uh, radio and the carbon monoxide sensor is always drawing about four or five watts. That's why people's batteries die and they don't realize it. So you should always unplug your batteries. Turn on the uh, awning light. Right now the awning light is doing 36 watts uh, minus four. So let's call it uh, 32 watts for the awning light. If I turn the awning light off, underbelly lights are on now. And that is doing 16, 16 minus four, uh, 12 watts. Uh, let's call it 20 watts that we're saving on average by using the underbelly lights instead of the awning light. Uh, wiring looks a ton better. And uh, yeah, get ready for a big camping trip coming up in a few weeks. But until then guys, check out this video right here where I install this underbelly freshwater tank heater on my pop-up camper. I also install some USB chargers and some LED lights in the storage underneath the sofa. Thanks for watching guys. As always, we'll see you in the next video.